This is your sign to start living a soft life. If your YouTube and TikTok feed looks anything like mine, you'll have been seeing examples of people living the soft life everywhere. And to be honest, this is a trend I can get behind 100%. In this video, we're gonna be talking about what it means to live a soft life, and I'll be sharing 10 actionable steps that you can take to start making the soft life your reality. So it is time to step off the stress hamster wheel, to get out of survival mode, and start making life more joyful, more effortless. It is time to step into your soft life era. If we haven't met before, I'm Dr. Sarah. I'm a medical doctor and an online coach. If you enjoy this video and want to learn about how we can work together, then I'll leave all the details in the description box below. So here are the points that I'll be covering in this video and I will leave them arranged in chapters down below so you can skip around and go to the parts that you're most interested in. Okay, so first of all, what is soft life. What does it mean? What is soft life era? What are we talking about here? The definition that I found online is that soft life is a lifestyle of comfort and relaxation with minimal challenges or stress. Basically putting your mental health, your well-being first and foremost, making those things a priority in your life. And this is why I can 100% get behind this trend because for so long in my life, I did not do that. And I see healthcare professionals, lots of other people living in this stressful, high energy life lifestyle that is just not serving them well. I've also heard people talking about soft life in terms of stepping into your feminine energy, living a more feminine lifestyle. Basically, a life of more tranquility, more peace and more ease. Living a soft life is about being pulled towards things in your life rather than pushing for things. The first thing we need to do to start stepping into our soft life era is to stop thinking that everything has to be hard. Scrap the struggle, scrap the hustle. You do not get an award for having the hardest and most difficult life. We need to learn to step away from the victim mentality. A life has to be so busy and so hard. This goes for your work, your exercise routine, your relationships. It does not have to be hard. In fact, it's not meant to be hard. So I was this person, everything had to be difficult. Everything had to be busy, busy all the time. I used to say that my life was held together by cortisol, caffeine and dry shampoo because it really was. I was stressed all the time. I never got enough sleep and I didn't really have enough time to wash my hair a lot of the time. So dry shampoo it was. Whenever people asked me how I was, my go-to answer was always, I'm so busy and that was the truth. Every minute of every day was scheduled and rushed. And I realized that I wasn't actually doing a lot of things that brought me joy. I was just going from thing to thing, work, obligations, responsibilities, things I'd said yes to, even the things that was supposed to make me happy, seeing friends, seeing family. I was actually too stressed and tired to really enjoy. I remember going from a night shift to one of my best friend's weddings and I was so tired. I remember crying in the toilets at the wedding because I was just so exhausted and I remember trying to make small talk with some of the guests there and I was struggling to get my words out. I was just so exhausted that my brain wasn't functioning correctly. This is the stress and struggle life. This is not what we want. I was desperate to move away from this and this is where I have moved into my soft life era. When I first heard about soft life I was like oh okay, this is what I've been trying to do for the last four or five years of my life, getting off the struggle bus. <laughs> this is it and more of us should be doing this. We work so hard. So many of my healthcare colleagues are burnt out and it makes me so sad to see. Not looking after yourself is standard practice. You know, you hear people saying, oh, I've had only had five hours sleep last night. And another person saying, oh, lucky you, I only had three. Why is this okay? Why is this okay? I made another video about this right here where I talk about being overtired is not a badge of honor. This is just something that is so toxic in healthcare and we desperately need to move away from it. To step into your soft life era, you need to learn to stop tying your self-worth to how hard you're working, how difficult things are, how busy you are. I used to feel like things had to be hard in order to have a sense of achievement. In fact, there's still something I'm trying to unlearn at the moment. I'm definitely getting better at this. That rush of pushing myself to my limits, you know, getting to exam season, doing all-nighters, cramming. I want to change the narrative. I want to be part of a movement where more of us are taking exquisite care of ourselves, we're getting the rest we need, we're recharging on our days off, we take our breaks and we eat food that fuels us properly and makes us feel good. If you feel like you're in a state of constant stress at the moment, check out the description box below where I've added a link to my training on how you can stop feeling stressed all the time. Number two, 
notice what it is that's stressing you out. To live a soft life, we need to tune in to the things that normally we try to drown out and ignore. Start paying attention to the things that are frustrating you, bothering you, irritating you, making you annoyed, angry, sad, disappointed, things that are making you stressed. Chances are, if you've been living the struggle life for far too long, then you have probably gotten used to ignoring the signs that your mind and body are giving you to slow down or stop or change something in your life. I know that I used to be the kind of person that would just suck it up and carry on. Didn't matter how I was feeling, I could just keep going and going until I got to the point where I really couldn't and I was totally burnt out. As the saying goes, make time for your wellness or you'll have to make time for your illness. You may even notice yourself getting physical symptoms when you're in stress mode, survival mode. I know that when I was in that position, I was ill pretty much all the time. I was always run down, always on the verge of some sort of cold or fluy type thing. My skin was bad, I had digestive issues. My body was crying out for me to listen and to slow down, but I was just carrying on, plowing forwards. So to step into your soft life, you need to start listening to your mind and body, paying attention to the clues that they are showing you. Number three, it's time to start eliminating the stressors in your life. When you've figured out the things that actually are causing you excess stress, it's time to start removing them gently from your life. So for example, the things that I've discovered that were stressing me out, that was bothering me a lot of the time was rushing, running late, being around rude people or toxic people, not getting enough sleep and feeling tired and exhausted all the time, not having enough money. And some other examples I've heard people talking about are living in a neighborhood that doesn't feel safe or living next door to noisy neighbors, or perhaps you've just realized that your job is sucking the life out of you. Maybe it's time to start making an exit plan. Be really proactive here and remember that you are the CEO of your own life. You get to decide how the story goes and what you will and won't accept in your life. You have the power to change so much more than you think. And when you step into that soft life role, you get to say, mm -mm, no, I'm not interested in those things. I'm not interested in drama, gossip, rushing, running late. Those kinds of things are leaving my life. They are not making me feel joyful. They're making me feel stressed and I don't need to be having any part of that in my life. It's as simple as this. If you don't like something, change it. Create boundaries in your life. Work out what you will and won't accept. I have a whole video about that up here so you can watch that after this video. And if money is the stressor for you, then work out ways that you can eliminate that stress. It may take you months. It may take you a couple of years to get to that point. Create yourself a financial safety net so you're not scrabbling around at the bottom of your overdraft every month, worrying about how you're going to pay your bills. Create yourself a nice chunky savings safety net so that you know that you're okay. You're not worrying about money. Number four, stop saying yes when you mean no. Now this is one for my people pleasers out there. Notice when you're saying yes to things, but it actually feels like a no. So often we say yes to things because we care too much about what the other person thinks of us. Yes, I'll get involved in that project. Yes, I'll join that committee. Yes, I'll help out with that. Yes, I'll come to that event. But then when it comes to the day, we find ourselves dreading it and regretting it and wondering why we said yes, just wishing that we had some more downtime, time to ourselves, time to do the things that we actually want to do. That the best thing you can do here is to learn to leave a pause and get back to the other person in 24 hours. A gracious no is much better than a half-hearted yes. And as Derek Sivers says, everything in your life should either be an F, yeah, or a no. There is no middle ground. Don't go, to, don't go into things half-hearted. In your soft life era, you are holding on to your time, your energy, and only giving it out to things that are truly meaningful and important to you. Number five, think about ways that you can make your life easier and more fun. Remember, soft life is joyful and effortless. Okay, so there are obviously things that we all have to do to keep our lives running smoothly, responsibilities and obligations that we don't always love. But when you're living a soft life, these things should not be bringing you stress. We want to aim to create more blank space in our lives, more time to do the things that bring us joy, more time to do things that are meaningful to us, purposeful, that we really want to be doing. I realized that a big thing in my life that was bringing me a lot of stress was rushing at the last minute to do things all the time and 
I just gotten so used to doing that that it had become a habit in my life. I was always leaving things till the last minute, definitely making my life harder because of that. And I've found that getting more organized and doing things in advance has brought me so much peace. So one of the things that I love to do is to host. I love having friends and family to stay. But in my struggle life, I would always end up making up the room and tidying up the house on the day of their arrival, trying to desperately run a hoover around, clean bathrooms, change bed sheets, do the dusting, make food, and it would end up meaning that by the time my guests arrived, I was pretty stressed, probably pretty sweaty and a bit tired. But more recently, now that I'm in my soft life era, I'm trying to get things done way ahead of time. Food shopping, getting the guest room ready, everything cleaned and prepped before they arrive. The sheets are fresh, the room is clean, and I even go so far as to prep all the food that we're gonna be eating well in advance. So for example, prepping a stew a couple of days ahead of time, a lasagna, maybe even freezing it if I've got time to do it a week ahead so that when I'm hosting, I've got time to spend quality time with my friends and family, not looking at recipes and chopping and being busy in the kitchen, but enjoying their company and spending quality time with them. I know that this may seem like a small thing, but the shift for me was absolutely huge. One of the things for me about moving from being stressed all the time into my soft life was that I really wanted to be present and enjoy quality time with friends and family and be intentional with my time, be present, feel like life is just easy. So doing little things like this has made a massive difference to me. Another habit that I used to do that brought me a lot of stress in my struggle era was always running late. I was the person that would try and fit in as many things as I possibly could before I left the house. It was always packing on the morning of going somewhere. I was trying to do a laundry load. I was trying to style my hair I was running around doing everything the morning of leaving and what did that bring me a lot of stress and a lot of hassle and inevitably as I was leaving the house I would realize I'd forgotten something and have to run back in stressed chaos it was always a mess but once I learned how to stop running late all the time my life felt more serene I just started telling myself I'm the kind of person who arrives early to things and then the habits that I needed to do to make that a reality just fell into place so now I do things like trying not to fit too much in in the morning of leaving to go somewhere I try and have my bags packed and ready to go my breakfast is laid out the night before my lunch is ready in the fridge and packed everything is good to go I can just get up do my peaceful calm morning routine and I am out of the door with plenty of time not rushing not stressing you have to keep asking yourself how can I make this more joyful more effortless okay so there are obviously responsibilities and obligations that we have to fulfill even when we're in our soft life. Soft life is not about avoiding those kinds of things. We have to do them, but it's about not stressing about them, making them as easy as possible. So when there are things that you have to handle that you don't necessarily love doing, you can put them into four categories. And I've adapted this from Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. Look at your list of responsibilities and obligations and things that you just don't really want to do. First of all, we're gonna see if there's anything that can be deleted. Is there anything that you're doing on that list that is just something that you've always done that actually you could just strike off the list. You don't actually need to do it. It's just busy work, an event you don't have to go to. Did you say yes to that thing because you were just people pleasing? So that's the first thing, delete. Secondly, we're gonna go through that list and work out if there is anything you can automate. Automate whatever you can in your soft life era. We are not going about our lives doing things that could be done by an app. Thirdly, look through that list of things and see if there's anything you can delegate. Can you hire someone, pay someone to do things for you? Hire a cleaning service for your house. Hire someone to come and build furniture for you. Do not be afraid to get help from others. Ask your partner, ask your friends, ask your neighbors. Can you hire a local teenager to come and mow your lawn or wash your car? Do other things that you don't really enjoy. They'll be happy for the money and you'll be happy to have that job taken off your plate. Get creative here because there may be chores that you hate doing that your friends, family or neighbors don't mind doing and maybe you could do a chore swap with them. You do a chore that they hate, they do one for you that you hate. And finally, if there are things you can't delete, automate or delegate, you've just gotta make it fun and get it done. Do things like putting a timer on just to get that thing done, put good music on, make those things fun. We want to make things joyful, we wanna make things effortless. Number six, learning to rest and recharge properly. A big part of living the soft life is being able to step off that stress hamster wheel. And you can only do that 
when you're well rested. You need sleep and lots of it. If you've read the book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, then you will know exactly what I'm talking about. We need sleep for our physical health, our mental health. When we're asleep, our brains are cleaning themselves. It's when we lay down memories, it's how we learn. We are able to be more creative and well when we're well rested. To put it bluntly, the shorter your sleep, the shorter your lifespan. And I am consistently shocked by how little sleep everyone's getting. I'm talking my colleagues, fellow doctors, nurses, we're not sleeping enough. My coaching clients, patients that I see in the emergency department, no one is getting much sleep. Everyone seems to be getting like five hours of sleep a night and this is not what we need for a soft life. We need to be well rested, get that beauty sleep. If you want to feel well and you want to feel vibrant and like you've got enough energy, getting enough sleep is key. I always talk about taking exquisite care of yourself and the fundamentals of doing that are good sleep, good nutrition and good exercise. And sleep is always the one that I say to people they need to focus on first. If you're not well rested, you're going to be struggling to make decisions and to think clearly. You're going to be feeling stressed. You need good sleep to be able to feel relaxed and ease yourself into your soft life. And as well as sleep, we need to factor in rest, relaxation and time to recharge our batteries. Looking at a calendar that is totally jam-packed with every minute of every day scheduled is stressful. And that was what my life looked like for years on end. We need to work out ways to create blank space for ourselves, time to relax, enjoy ourselves, enjoy our homes, enjoy time with friends and family, use our time intentionally, do fun things, do creative hobbies. Number seven, let go of guilt. This is for all my people pleasers out there. I know that so many of us feel guilty about taking downtime. And part of living a soft life is being able to let go of that guilt, being able to accept that taking time for ourselves is necessary. It's not lavish or extra, it's necessary. If you've been living in survival mode for a long time, then you may actually feel quite uncomfortable when you take time to prioritize yourself. I know that was true for me. I remember when I was totally stressed and overwhelmed all the time. If I had a day off during the week, I felt like I needed to be productive. I felt like at the end of the day, I needed to have something to show for myself. Even though I'd been working all week and maybe even working at the weekend, I didn't feel like I could justify taking time to actually relax on my day off. And even when I did relaxing activities, I wasn't necessarily allowing my mind to relax because I was feeling guilty about the things that I wasn't doing. I felt like I constantly needed to earn or justify my downtime, which you do not need to do. That is not part of the soft life agenda. Taking time to rest and recharge is not something you need to earn. It's something that's necessary, like filling up your car with fuel. It needs to happen in order for you to run perfectly. Like you wouldn't with your car, you cannot allow yourself to get to empty before you decide it's time to refuel. Number eight, learn what you actually like. If you've been a total people pleaser and living this hustle life where you're just doing, doing, doing all the time, you may have been doing everything for everybody else and saying yes to everything and everyone and not actually tuning in to whether or not you like certain things. You may have even forgotten what you like to do. If you were just given an empty week, you may not know what you would actually spend that time doing. So here's a way that you can do this. Write a joy list. Write down anything that you would like to be, do, have, experience. Things that make you feel happy and joyful just thinking about them. Things that you're naturally drawn towards. Remember at the start of the video when I said that a soft life is about being pulled towards something rather than pushing yourself. Tune into what you feel drawn to do. Some examples from myself and other people that I've spoken to about this. Being outside in nature, snuggling on the sofa with a book, going shopping with friends, yoga, pilates, spending time at the beach, having a spa day, home cooked meals with family, going roller skating, taking time each morning to write in a journal, playing a musical instrument just for fun, watching live music and live comedy. Keep this list as an active list. Anytime that you see something that inspires you that you think you want to try, add it to the list. Make a Pinterest board, have a list on your phone of things you want to do. Number nine, making time for yourself. This soft life is not gonna happen unless you prioritize yourself and make time for you. You've gotta schedule these things regularly. So all those things on your joy list, they have to happen. You've gotta make them happen. And when you do, embrace the feeling of how good it feels to do something that 
you really want to be doing. Make those things a reality every day, every week, every month. Don't wait for high days and holidays. I challenge you to take yourself on a date day where the only goal is to go do things that make you really happy. Take yourself off to an art gallery. Take yourself to go and buy a nice coffee and a pastry and relax in the park, enjoying people watching with no care in the world. This is what the soft life is all about. I challenge all of my coaching clients to give themselves a minimum of two hours a week that is just for them. That is guilt-free relaxation. In an ideal world, we'd be doing this more, but I think starting with two hours a week is a really nice starting point. That time is protected, it is just for you. And give yourself permission to spend some money on yourself. You know, I'm not talking get yourself into debt, but treat yourself. Number 10, give yourself a luxurious lifestyle. How you treat and value yourself is important and it is absolutely key if you want to live a soft life. A soft life is about creating experiences for yourself that make every day feel special. Showing yourself that you are worthy, showing yourself that you deserve nice things and you deserve to live a nice life. You are worth putting the effort in for. Even on a budget, you can do things that make your life feel a bit bougie and a bit luxurious. So for example, Drinking your juice in the morning out of a wine glass, or if you have them, crystal glasses. Wearing your favorite perfume every day, even if you're just at home. I love to light scented candles around my home. Wearing fabrics that feel really good against your skin. Wearing clothes that fit you well, nothing uncomfortable, nothing scratchy, no scratchy labels. Investing good bed sheets. There's nothing better than getting into crisp cotton bed sheets. Keeping your living space clean, decluttered, tidy, making your home feel like a sanctuary for yourself. And making your home feel like you, decorating with art, pictures, even if you're in rented accommodation or a dorm room, there are things you can do to make your little space feel like your sanctuary. Make time to read every day, giving yourself a relaxing morning and evening routine. Eating your favorite foods, and doing things to make it feel extra special, like squeezing a lemon over it or adding some fresh herbs making time for personal grooming, styling your hair, doing your makeup if you like to wear makeup, ironing your clothes, presenting yourself how you want to look, taking yourself to nice places, even if you don't have much budget, going for a coffee in the fancy place. What it comes down to is working out what's stressing you out in your life and trying to remove those things or make them as fun as possible, but adding things in that make your life feel more joyful, more effortless, make you feel like you deserve a good life. So I hope this video has inspired you to step into your soft life era. Come and join me, it's a wonderful place to be. I know that a soft life will look different to all of us, so I'd love to hear in the comments below what your idea of a soft life would look like, anything that I've missed or anything that you would add to this. And don't forget to check out my training down below on how to stop feeling stressed all the time. For watching this video, you may have thought to yourself, you know what, I give way too much of my time and energy to everyone else. And if that's the case, then you may need some firmer boundaries in your life, my friend. You are in luck because I've made a video all about that right here, how to set boundaries. And in this video, I give loads of examples of how to have the conversations that you're dreading having when you want to set boundaries in your life. Don't forget to take exquisite care of yourself and I'll see you next time. Bye. On your bed. <laughs> that is not on your bed. Go on your bed. Go on your bed. <laughs> what are you doing? You want to be in the limelight. You're not meant to be here while I'm filming. Go on then, on your bed. <laughs> okay, okay. You can lie down here. <laughs> You're kind of in the way there, Tills. Come on. <laughs>